<laughs> oh, we're going to get into some, some news? Let's All get right, into some go. news. Yeah, we got slant news. It's like... Blah, 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 blah. Um, okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, this is really interesting. Because Mexican regional music has been around for a long time. And long time. Uh, it has been always a big seller. But now... It is uh, selling internationally. Yes. So let's read a little bit, and then there's a there's a connection to to a, a TV show that this gentleman is a part of. Oh. Um, Karin Leon, who's huge. I like I like this guy's voice. Um, mm -hmm. While it's been around for decades, with the late Selena Quintanilla weaving pop disco R and B into her Tejano music. Something extraordinary happened in the last year. Peso Pluma's Ella Baila Sola has surpassed a billion streams on Spotify last month, becoming the first regional Mexican top 10 hit on Billboard's all-genre Hot 100, peaking at number four. Days later, Bad Bunny collaborated with Grupo Frontera, number five. What, you know Pluma's song, song right? Yeah. What, what what do you consider that 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 type of uh, of, of film of music? Because I talked to uh, Andy Vargas today about this as well. Right. What's your thoughts on this? No, I think it's it's so basically it's the it's kind of like a hybrid because then you have banda Correct. music, you know, and but Bad Bunny does basically banda, uh, corrido, and baladas mixed, mm -hmm. and he is not he's kind of doing the auto tune thing to it mm -hmm. so basically it's like a rap auto-tune uh, sort of melody rap to it that's really you know prevalent with a lot of the reggaeton so he brought that over to regional um not mm -hmm. that they weren't doing it before he's not the the first to do it but he's the first to like blow up with it including like the the you know the everything he wears it's more like hip-hop induced and then you have the banda people who are you know mostly cowboy dress uh, ranchero style so right. it, it, it is like a blend so you kind of have the two worlds clashing you have people who listen to like hardcore hip-hop and they also listen to regional and they kind of boom clash together and it's it's jumping off it's the next reggaeton in a sense yeah i i think it's for me it, it musically it's much more palatable uh than reggaeton like mm -hmm. it, it's it, it, I, it there's definitely a stronger connection i have with this music um even straight up uh like a straight up bando or corrido like i just was you know never my thing thing it depend but let's go to uh lila cobo who has been uh you know in the latin music coverage for for years working with billboard she says never in a billion never in a million years i thought this was going to become global i think that's the thing right that but that it would just stay Mexico, maybe the States, but it's become global. One of the factors contributing to the regional uh, global reach is streaming, which democratized yeah. listening habits and allowed listeners who might not otherwise come across this music to fall in love with it. Um, on Spotify, Mexican music grew 400% wow. worldwide over the last five years. Jesus. No, it's amazing. <laughs> But I think a lot of Go people ahead. also, they have this this almost like, how mm -hmm. could it kind of attitude, I guess, mm -hmm. about regional Mexican music, mm -hmm. which regional Mexican music is beautiful. And it's very diverse from each part of Mexico. And it's gotten mm -hmm. a lot of play because I know a lot of people, you know, around the world don't realize this, but Mexico has a huge, huge cattle and cowboy um market meaning mm -hmm. they they sell horses to saudi arabia europe spain they have world champion horses and their mm -hmm. uh you know concerts and and stuff like that and, and brazil is huge i mean there's some you know mexican artists who come to brazil and to argentina mm -hmm. to to other places because there there's a lot of cowboys around the world and this kind of like yeah. cowboy culture, they people always kind of like say, well, the, well, the American side, but the Mexican side is almost as strong worldwide as the American side. It was just not seen by certain people, you know. And I think it's just so, happening to show. 
one of the new guys that I discovered because of the Zorro TV show and the Zorro soundtrack is Karin Leon, uh, Mexican singer-songwriter. Karin wrote on a T-shirt uh, at a war show recently, last summer, and it read F regional, an apparent reference to the phrase regional Mexican music. And mm. later published a manifesto chastising the ways in which different types of Mexican folk music have been restricted by the term. And he says, labeling it regional is wrong. We're not, we're, we're not more regional. We are more international. What does he mean by that? Hmm. I, I think, I think they're trying to say that regional, it's not, it's like a slur. I don't see how, but you know, there, it's like a diminutive, you know, it's like, oh, you're putting it, you know, it's oh, it's only regional. It's kind of like when mm. people used to say that urban music to, to say, uh, you know, like okay. hip hop and stuff like that. So I think that's what they're they're trying to say. It's like, uh, I mean, we call it musica regional also. So, I mean, it could be. I mean, the vaquera music or or rancho. It's you know, at least it's getting out there. That's 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 a good part. You know, that's you're looking all this kind of cultures that are just meshing together over good music. That can't be a bad thing. Right. So I wanted to uh, go to Sequoia's uh, studio's Twitter page. And mm -hmm. these are the the people that produce the Zorro TV show and among other things they're producing, right? But one of right. the things that they produce is an, an incredible musical soundtrack of artists from all over Latin America and America. Juanes, Karin Leon, Keith, Urban? Keith is that, Urban. Is that right? Yeah. Correct. And it's this speaks to what that article was saying was that now, because there's some really Mexican sounding and, and vibras to the soundtrack. Right. Whereas mm -hmm. before it would have kind of been more like flamenco and from España. Right. And it's got that, but the fact that the Spanish production went to Mexico, right? Went to South America to get these acts says a lot what do you have to say no i agree because it, it shows a lot on their part that they're trying because at that time people do say that oh you know all the spanish influence but at that time mexico mm -hmm. had already been a melting pot with french and german influence and banda had existed because you know the 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 germans you know like would have the mm -hmm. bands playing for them and then the you know uh, all of all of natives and stuff would pick up the instruments and create our own songs to it. But there's a so, rich history behind it. And the fact that they did it, it shows that they care about that. You know, that's Mexican for you. It's, it's a Mex takes place in Mexico. Well, it's now global, right? And this, yeah. this, okay. So guys, what, what we just read, what we just talked about here is the musical example of what is going on. Really like kind of like taking different artists, bringing them together and then you're doing these hybrid pieces uh, for for a television or a film, right? So let's just listen about seven seconds, and then we'll, we'll stop and talk. But uh, here we go. This is uh, part of the intro. <laughs> That's Karin's voice, right? And and then uh, they're gonna break into Rosario, who's from Spain, and then Keith Urban, who sings in English. Uh, Fletcher. Yeah, and it shows you the melting pot because that's isn't that what you know America was at the time and 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 it's always kind of been. You have this melting pot of ideas of styles, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and you do hear it here because there's a little bit of regional taste, there's a little bit of Spanish flamenco guitar into it, so everything's mm -hmm. mixed in together, and it, you know it creates a beautiful sound. All right, let's jump and listen a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, that's a fun song, man. That's a song I yeah. play on repeat on my Spotify now. Cool. Yeah. You know, you know, you, you're, you, yeah. And, and the thing with Rosario, she's got that very kind of like that almost, uh, that Middle Eastern, you know, like verbato thing going on. Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. I mean, I don't right. know what exactly you call that, but I just find it just beautiful. Yeah. 
Well, there's a lot of, I mean, look at uh, Shakira um, that started bringing in Arabic uh, tones to her songs. Uh, er, yeah, there, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because there's a lot of, I mean, there's a huge Lebanese and, um, you know, enclave in South America, Libyans, and a lot of people. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mixing pot, you know, yeah. everybody and everything. And to have them, you know, showcase their talent, that's a good thing. So now with this song, it first starts off with Karin, very Mexican sounding. Da 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 da. Then you have Rosario with her. Uh, 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 Arab, how do you say Arabic? Yeah, I think it's more like Spanish. Arabic, yeah. yeah. Very, yes. you know, got that that wonderful feel. Then you're gonna hear some English singing, right? You're, you, this is, uh, I believe, Keith Urban. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. yeah 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 and he's bigger right now in uh you know in the country sector here in the united states very well beloved so it it like i said it, it it shows you that they consider this to be an international um an international production and it is and right. you know regardless of you know listen you guys can check out all our <laughs> our zorro <laughs> or zorro coverage which was pretty extensive yeah. But in regards to the music, and uh, we'll put another link uh, in the video box description uh, of getting Juan is involved, getting all these different artists involved. Uh, this is pretty seismic for Latino music, for just great global music. Uh, I love it, man. This, yeah. is, this is right up my alley. Right yeah. up my alley. Let's, let's hear a little bit more. Don't you know that I'm not to die? Yeah, man. I yeah, will say cool. that. Yeah, they go ahead. Yeah, it's really cool. Juan is, you know, it's a, it's a great star who's have, he's done some English stuff before. I mean, he's not well, mm -hmm. I think, played, I guess, in a, in the North America, but you know, in South America, he's 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 huge. And I will say this, uh, let's just say that the season one, you know, it's decent, whatever. Some people love it more. Some people don't like it more. This soundtrack is an absolute knockout. Absolutely, guys. You guys got to grab it, uh, some different songs. And it all goes back to this Mex Mexican regional connection. Carlos Larín, you got Sonora. And then going out with these other uh, um, um, international artists. Yeah. Nice man. That's nice. yeah. So yeah. Um, so you could even start with, uh, you know, with their page, and they have connect. They have uh, links to their, to their uh, what do you call it? to their Spotify. Right. As far as the music. So yeah. Yeah, yeah man. No, the no, music of Zorro. The music. The music of Zorro. Um Julissa says <laughs> 